Stomach acid has been such a popular ingredient that is so very heavily marketed. And people make a lot of mistakes when using hyaluronic acid in their skincare regimen, leaving their skin even drier and more wrinkled. For this ingredient to be effective, it has to be used properly. And is it even necessary to use hyaluronic acid in a serum or can we just use it in a moisturizer? Well, I'm going to answer this question at the end of this video, so make sure you watch the entire video so you can learn how to implement this skincare ingredient. My name is Dr. Swati Cannon and I am a board certified dermatologist out here in California. I'm going to debunk some of the myths regarding this overly touted skincare ingredient and also teach you how to properly use HA in your skincare regimen so that it hydrates and helps plump your skin the way it's supposed to. I will also give product recommendations in this video so keep on watching. In my previous videos I have definitely mentioned hyaluronic acid as you know being part of vitamin C or as an ingredient and as part of moisturizer but I never really explained how to properly use this ingredient and that's why I wanted to make this video to fill that gap. Now only use hyaluronic acid once you have perfected your basic skincare routine and you just want a little extra homework and think that you're ready to handle new ingredients. Make sure you have a basic skincare routine down that contains, you know, for example, vitamin C or some other active serum in the morning with moisturizer and sunscreen and a retinoid and nighttime moisturizer. So make sure you have your basic routine down. You can watch this video on on how to create a skincare routine. It gives you templates for both morning and nighttime routines. And remember that consistency with the basic and simple skincare regimen is going to get you a lot further than using a bunch of ingredients and just irritating your skincare barrier. So with that rant over, let's get started. What is hyaluronic acid? So technically it is not an exfoliating acid. The hyaluronic acid molecule has a lower pH and that's why it's given the name acid. It's technically a group of sugar molecules that attract water. Anything that attracts water is a humectant, so it attracts water. It's readily found in our own skin. So when we look at our skin, we have the epidermis, which is the top portion, and then the dermis, which is the lower portion of the skin. So hyaluronic acid is already found within the dermis of our skin. To be more specific, it's found within the extracellular matrix of the dermis, and it makes up these large molecular units called gags. Not like gag, but glycosaminoglycans, and you can try saying that 10 times. But gags provide supportive network to elastin and collagen. So it's really a combination of collagen, elastin, and gags that give our skin that suppleness and that glow and that nice dewy texture. So hyaluronic acid is a really important part of that. So I'm going to now call hyaluronic acid HA because it's a really long word that I'm going to tongue twist. So native HA, so what's found inside of our skin, can actually hold a thousand times its weight of water. So it can hold on to water a thousand times its weight, which is a pretty hefty job. And where do you think it gets its water from? Well, it gets it from the blood and the blood gets it from the water that we drink and the water in our diet. You probably also have heard of fillers that are made of HA. And so these HA fillers contain hyaluronic acid that's a similar weight to the HA found inside of our own skin. But more on filler in a separate video. Now, what about HA found in skincare products? Let's talk about that. There are various forms of HA. When you just look at HA products, you're going to see all these different names regarding HA. And you need to become familiar with what these names mean and what it means for your skincare. So is this HA going to plump my skin or is this HA going to help my wrinkles? So it's really important to know the basics of HA in skincare ingredients. So to review, there is hyaluronic acid, also called hyaluron. This is what we find inside of our skin and it's a very large molecule. So we call it a high molecular weight HA. Because it's so big, when it's used in topical skincare, it's incapable of of penetrating the epidermis so it cannot penetrate the top layer of the skin. It just sits on the top and binds to water. Now can you almost sense what the issue is when a molecule just sits on top of the skin and binds to water? If you can and you made it to this part of the video please comment below and let me know what you think the issue is. Since HA draws its water where is it going to get its water from if it's in skincare? Well it's going to get it from your skin. That means it's going to increase trans epidermal water loss. It's going to pull the water out of your skin cells and leave it on top of the skin. So initially, this is going to leave your skin nice and plump, but over time, it's going to dry out your skin if you don't use it properly. The only time that HA has a harder time pulling water out of the skin is if it's used on damp skin and with an occlusive agent on top. So we're going to talk about this later down in the video. So therefore, it's very tough to call HA by itself hydrating. Can we really call it hydrating when we have to use other products to help it hydrate? 
let me know what you think. <laughs> now, we do lose our native HA just like we lose everything else as we get older. So this means that our skin is going to look more dehydrated, the wrinkles are going to look more prominent as we get older. So skincare industries wanted to figure out how to use HA, which is such a good humectant, how to use it in skincare. Since native HA is so large and it doesn't penetrate the epidermis, they figured out how to break down the molecule and they call it hydrolyzed HA. So hydrolyzed HA is a low molecular weight HA. It's basically hyaluronic acid, like the big molecule broken down into little smaller pieces. Companies claim that the low molecular weight HAs can penetrate the epidermis and go into the dermis and hydrate from within, thus helping fine lines and wrinkles. But the question we need to ask ourselves is, how well do these molecules really penetrate the skin? And even if it penetrates, does it mingle with all the other HAs and say, hey, let's make more gags and support the collagen and elastin underneath our skin? Does it do that? Well, some studies say that it does and some studies say that it doesn't. I would err on the side to say that even if HA can penetrate the skin, perhaps they do help to hydrate, right? By pulling water from the blood, just like native HA, but they're not going to be so effective in getting rid of the fine lines and wrinkles as all of these marketing companies claim that HA does. The other form of HA you will see is sodium hyaluronate. Now this is the salt form of hyaluronic acid and it is also a low molecular weight HA. It is very commonly used in skincare products because it's so easy to make and it's very cheap to make it. Most of the time though sodium hyaluronate only penetrates maybe up to the epidermis, maybe a few cells in, but it doesn't really go deeper than the epidermis. So it stays pretty superficial. You might also see another version of this called potassium hyaluronate, and this is just another salt form that's very similar. Sodium acetylated, hyaluronate. I hope I pronounced that properly. This is a variation of sodium hyaluronate. Some studies claim that it has better moisture retention than other forms of HA. However, when we're looking at these studies, we really need to look at who is sponsoring the studies. Because if industries that are making the product also sponsoring the studies, well, there is an inherent bias within the study. That doesn't mean that the results of the study are not something that we can talk about. However, we should take these studies with a grain of salt. So really, ideally, if we could get high molecular weight HA, similar to what's found in our skin, but we can synthesize this high molecular weight HA and put it into the skin where native HA resides, then that would help the most in terms of wrinkles, collagen support, and hydration. And we can actually do that using filler. So certain types of filler, and I'm going to open this one just for you. So filler contains hyaluronic acid that is a high molecular weight. And we have certain types of filler that we can inject right as depots underneath the skin. And when we inject it, it not only helps with hydration, but it helps with making more gags, it helps with collagen, you know, supporting the collagen and elastin bundles that are underneath the skin. So overall improving the appearance. I just want to show this demo. I'm going to show you what high molecular weight HA, what it looks like on the skin. So I'm going to get really close. I need this as my hand. So this is kind of, so you can kind of see this is the entire syringe of filler. So it's not a lot of volume. And when I rub it in, it doesn't, it, I keep on rubbing it in. It doesn't really go into the skin at all. And this is what high molecular weight hyaluronic acid does. It doesn't really go deeper in the skin. Now, if I put water on here, it was it's going to attract water and plump up. These particles will plump up. But right now, it's just gonna take water from my skin and dehydrate my skin in the long run. So does this mean that we shouldn't use hyaluronic acid at all? No, if it's used properly, it's still really great for hydration. But the way people have been using it all these years is that they would buy the HA serum or the HA gel and they would apply it on their lips and their skin thinking it's going to plump it all up. Initially, it does plump it up as the hyaluronic acid molecules suck the water out of your skin. But as the HA evaporates, it's going to leave your skin and your lips look like a dried raisin. So the key is to use it properly to avoid dehydration long term. What kind of forms of hyaluronic acid should we be looking for in skincare? As we talked about, there's high molecular weight HA and low molecular weight HA. High molecular weight HA is a large molecule that plumps the skin short term and it's actually also anti-inflammatory. But long-term, it will leave your skin dry. Low molecular weight HA supposedly goes into the skin to help hydrate internally and to help with fine lines. We're going to take these claims with a grain of salt. Ideally, you're 
hyaluronic acid should have both high molecular weight HA and low molecular weight HA so you can get all of the benefits. When should you use HA? So you can use it before big events like weddings. So for example, I used HA one or two days before my wedding to give my skin that more plump and dewy glazed donut appearance that's very popular on social media nowadays. And if you use it properly, you can also use it anytime your skin barrier is broken or damaged or if you have dry skin and you need that extra moisture kick. How to not use HA? So let's talk about what you shouldn't do. Don't use HA every single day and don't use multiple products with HA. So you don't need an HA serum, vitamin C serum with HA, and then a moisturizer with HA, you don't need so much HA. If your vitamin C contains HA, great, you don't need an extra HA serum. Or if your moisturizer contains HA, you don't need an extra HA serum. So don't use so much HA so often. Now, finally, how do you use HA? This whole time I've been talking about, if you use it properly, it's gonna be effective. How, so how do we use it? Now, here's where we talk about how to use HA in a serum and then how to use it in a moisturizer. So if you have an HA serum, so I have this one, it's a Neutrogena Hydro Boost Hyaluronic Acid Serum. Since since it attracts water, you want to use it on damp skin. And here's how I recommend using it. I recommend the sandwich method. So after washing your face, either leave it damp or spray it to dampen your face. Then use two to three drops of hyaluronic acid to your entire face and neck. Wait about 30 seconds or a minute, let it all soak in, and then you can use a facial moisturizer on top. Like I said, you don't need to use an HA moisturizer on top of an HA serum. After you use the moisturizer and after you let that soak in as well, you can then use an occlusive agent like Vaseline or Aquaphor to seal it all in. So occlusive agents prevent trans epidermal water loss and you really want to prevent that when you're using hyaluronic acid. This is also called slugging. So I'm going to make a video about slugging as well. So if you want to subscribe and stay tuned for all of these awesome videos coming up. If you skip the damp skin or if you skip the moisturizer on top, then you're just going to dehydrate your skin in the long run. But if used correctly, it can hydrate and plump at the same time. I would recommend using it once or twice a week at the most and usually at nighttime under an occlusive agent and that's because occlusive agents are more greasy and so it's much harder to use greasier agents in the daytime. If you're using HA before a big event then use HA on damp skin and moisturizer on top. Let it all dry before applying your makeup. If you use HA once or twice it's not going to dry out your skin so it's okay to use it for big events. Now let's go over some product recommendations for HA serums. I have this Neutrogena Hydro Boost. This is the first HA serum I ever bought back, you know, many, many, many years ago when HA first came out on the market. This one contains two smaller forms of hyaluronic acid, so it contains hydrolyzed HA and sodium hyaluronate. It also contains vitamin B5 and glycerin, and so that's why this product is more hydrating. You know, usually you'll never just see HA alone by itself. It's not very hydrating. It's usually combined with other humectants and emollients to help salvage the HA that's in there. This one usually sells for about $20, so it is a cheaper option but only contains low molecular weight HA. Paula's Choice HA Booster is another product that I recommend. This one contains high molecular and low molecular weight HA. So it contains hyaluronic acid, which is a larger molecule, and the sodium hyaluronate, which is a low molecular weight HA. And also contains ceramides. And as I've talked before, um, ceramides are really great emollients to help repair the skincare barrier. And this one is a price point of $39. So I think it's a really great price point for all of the ingredients that you get in this bottle. Glow Recipe Plum Plump HA. This one is a fan favorite. Favorite. I also like this one as well. It contains various forms of HA, including both low and high molecular weight HA. So I think this is a really great product. It also contains some antioxidants and some silk proteins, which I think is their version of peptides. Now, silk proteins is just a marketing gimmick, but I still really like this product and it's about $44. So it's a really great price point for everything that you get. Strivectin HA Dual Response Serum. Now this one contains all six forms of HA. So it contains the lowest molecular weight HA, the intermediate forms all the way to the high molecular weight HA. And this one also contains peptides. So peptides we're going to talk about in a future video. So this one will help hydrate as well as help with fine lines and wrinkles. The downside of this one is its price tag of $79. The thing to note is that the more different types of HA your product contains, the more expensive it would be. So if you are an HA fan and if you tried this one, let me know. And if you tried any other ones that I haven't mentioned on this list and you like it, please let me know. It's impossible for me to try all of these products. So if other people have tried things, I'd really like to learn as well. Now this begs the question, why not just use HA in moisturizers since you have to use an HA with a moisturizer on top anyway? Ding, 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 ding. Yes, why not? The answer is yes, you can for sure just use a moisturizer with HA 
day. You don't need to use an HA serum and go through this complicated method of applying HA serum. If you use an HA moisturizer, then you just put it on damp skin and the moisturizer should contain other ingredients to help negate some of the trans epidermal water loss from using HA without an occlusive agent. In fact, you need to check out this video that goes through my favorite moisturizer recommendations with and without HA. This video will give you recommendations not only in terms of consistency, like a lightweight moisturizer to a heavier moisturizer, it will also give you recommendations based on your skin type, such as oily skin versus sensitive skin. So thank you for watching this video. Please hit the subscribe button and I will see you in the next one.